Before we get into this video, a couple things to go over first. This is a continuation of my complete Total Drama Universe rewrite. If you haven't seen the first two seasons, I highly recommend watching those first, linked in the description. Also, with the new characters and dynamics, as well as there being three teams, on top of having to cover the Celebrity Manhunt special, putting this together was a logistics nightmare, meaning that the pacing might feel a bit weird at times, especially during the first half of this video, so... Yeah, bear with me on that one. Just a reminder for potential spoilers for all seasons of Total Drama, including the reboot as well as Disventure Camp, now including the ongoing third season of that series since that just started, and as you can tell by the video length and the 31 pages of notes I wrote for this script, this is going to be my longest video to date, so yeah, buckle up. To determine who the two new people are this season, I used the random number generator and it landed on Julia and Mike, who I'll get to a bit later. Now to go through what each character has been doing in between the time of Action and World Tour. Ellie and Tess met between seasons in art school. This happens right before the third season of Disventure Camp, so it can still happen here too. In an interview, Tess would talk about how she broke up with Trent just because they got too distant and she'd feel kind of bad about the whole thing, while Ellie just reassures her it was the right thing to do. Trent would be recording sad songs on his guitar, singing about being single and lonely, and when they are shown to Tess and Ellie, Tess would have a sort of melancholic smile, whereas Ellie rolls her eyes and just says, whatever. Fiore is in Catholic school wreaking havoc. Alejandro would have clips of him performing in Olympic challenges and getting a spot on the podium, only for it to be revealed to be second place, while his brother Jose is in first. And when his brother is announced the winner, Alejandro's eye begins to twitch. Lindsay and Caleb are on a luxurious vacation, and unlike in the original, they don't get arrested since Lindsay wouldn't deface the Mona Lisa this time. Joe, Eva, and Ripper all get on the same treadmill show that Lashana and Tyler do originally, with Joe and Eva viciously competing against one another to run the fastest on the treadmill, while Ripper flies off the handle when he tries to keep up. Sierra would be uploading vlogs with Cody where he's clearly disinterested and kind of uncomfortable. Jeff and Bridget are making out by the beach so Blainley cuts the tape pretty fast and she thinks it's gross and boring to watch. Sugar would be on a farm shooting a cereal commercial. Beth would be helping Rosa Maria with her baby and they'd be best friends. And when asked about Lindsay, they'd say they haven't heard from her for a while since she'd be too busy hanging out with Caleb. One thing worth noting is that since the ending in action was more ambiguous than the one in Island, it's going to be more implicit than explicit that Lindsay's ending is the quote-unquote real one, where her being on the trip with Caleb is the main evidence for her ending, but it's not definitive proof the same way the season 1 ending is, just to keep true to the original. Emma, Bowie, and James would be doing a collaboration vlog on their social medias, and they would talk about growth, but then Blainley shows clips with Emma running back to her ex-boyfriend Chase even after he put her life at risk for stupid pranks, and this would contradict her whole spiel about growth. Then it cuts back to Emma's stream where Bowie and James both hastily question her judgment regarding not cutting off Chase even after all this time. Izzy and Owen are also going on other reality TV shows, except Izzy drags Owen onto some deserted forest ninja ambush challenge show where Owen is just freaking out the whole time and Izzy is fighting off a horde of ninjas like Strider Hear You with the red mask and everything. Except, you know, she'd be screaming the whole time while she's fighting. Since Harold, Cody, and Trent are all still here, I think they'd still form the band at some point, just with Justin being replaced with Z. And they'd still have the big fallout like in canon, with Harold attempting and failing to launch a solo beatboxing career. Sierra would no longer be anonymous this time, since she's not a new character in this timeline, and she'd still effectively take on the same role as in the original, running all the fan pages and encouraging all the other people to take back their fame, after all of them still get kicked out of the studio by Chris for his new show, Total Drama Dirtbags. Julia now replaces Alejandro as the lead in Total Drama Dirtbags, only because of her persona she'd be set up to be the quote-unquote nice one in the cast, while Mike is kinda just there with the rest of the cast kicked out. The nuns from Catholic school would be driving the bus to pick Fiore up, when Sugar and Joe knock out all the nuns and hijack the vehicle as all the other former contestants cringe at what they're seeing. Ripper insists on driving, and once they catch up to the van Julia is driving, Joe takes Sugar's bra and launches a bunch of their belongings at Julia, until one of Sugar's cabbages that she just had in her pocket is launched, and allows them to pull up way ahead. However, they all come to realize Ripper destroyed their tires in the process, causing all of them to go off a cliff just like in the original. As their bus crashes and they get stuck, Jeff decides to go on the voyage to find help after they are stuck at the bottom of the cliff like in the original, and because Mike and Julia are the two new people and Bridget was getting a tan, those three would automatically be in World Tour, so they wouldn't go with him. This is because Chris and Chef rescue everyone who didn't go with Jeff to find help and let them compete this season, but everyone who was with Jeff did not compete in Season 3, 
meaning this is where it is ultimately decided who competes in World Tour. Beth, Trent, and Eva also all go with Jeff originally, so I think they still would, except for Trent, since he'd still be on relatively okay terms with Tess, and even though it's awkward, he'd want to stay with her because deep down he still likes her, and wants to believe they have another chance. Towing the line between where he's not being too overbearing, but he is still poking a little bit too much. I also think Rosa Maria would go to accompany Beth, so with these three competing and these four definitely not competing, that leaves this 19 up in the air. But since there are 17 people that make up the cast at the beginning of World Tour, when you subtract these three, that means that only 14 of these people can compete, meaning that five of them have to get left behind. So I brought back my old friend, the random number generator, and Z, Owen, James, Sierra, and Izzy are all out, meaning... This is the cast for World Tour. The only things that I ensured would be that Tess, Trent, and Ellie are all on Team Victory, since they'd go together in the first challenge, and I think they'd get to the finish line first. And I decided Team Amazon should still have four assertive girls and one awkward guy to keep true to the original as well. Everything else was random, and these are the results. Also, since Duncan isn't here, no one quits this time. Mike would have a confessional where he talks about how nervous he is about accidentally revealing his other personalities and hopes others don't judge him for it. Now, going into this season's rewrite, I had to consider what to do with Mike, since his core persona is heavily embedded in his relationship with Zoe, who is no longer here. And because of that, I think he would be the same sort of aloof, timid, and kind of awkward self, but he would also secretly be desperate for romantic attention. Not like a full-on creep or simp like Sierra or anything, but definitely someone who would pursue getting a girlfriend, or at least want to. So instead of just immediately being attached to Zoe from the very beginning, he would have to try and interact with other people on his team, and after that, Chris closes out the episode. This episode's challenge is where each team has to move their respective item to the finish line. Since Team Victory won, they get a stick, Team Chris gets a goat, and Team Amazon still gets a camel. Team Victory should be able to pretty comfortably hold on to their lead. Originally, this team gets lost for a bit before, but even then, they still get to the water not too long after the other teams. And this time, I think they would get there a little faster, since they have people like Trent, Cody, and Ellie instead of, like, Ezekiel or Lindsay, who's still pretty dumb in that timeline, and DJ, who was dealing with the animal curse, etc, etc. Alejandro still gets his team on top of the goat, even though no one trusts him, so they get there at roughly the same time as Team Victory, and Team Amazon would probably get there at roughly the same time too, so yeah, everything before the teams get to the water doesn't change too much. Once all the teams get to the water and have to build boats to get across, Julia has a confessional, secretly revealing her true authentic self after pretending to be supportive and seemingly the only quote-unquote nice person on her team, which Mike says in confessional is refreshing to see. It's also worth mentioning, because Sierra and Izzy are no longer here, there's no team swap. This episode's elimination is dependent on the losing team not having their designated item at the end, where since Ezekiel lost the stick, his team voted him off. But in this version, Team Victory wouldn't lose, and Ezekiel isn't here to lose the stick either, so they'd be fine. However, with all the chaos going on on Team Chris, I actually think they get last this episode, since Alejandro obviously wouldn't have nearly the same amount of control over his team in this universe, since instead of being a brand new charmer, he's now widely hated and known. Lindsay, Fiore, and Alejandro would all have beef, with Caleb probably being too afraid to intervene, and Harold just not getting through to them. And Bowie, I think, just wouldn't want to deal with it, since even though he wants to win, it's just not worth it. Also, a big part of how Team Amazon and Team Chris made it across the croc-infested waters was because of Izzy and Sierra, since the former could communicate with the camel, and the latter is an expert basket weaver, which allowed her to make the boat for Team Chris really fast before she switched teams. But Team Amazon has Sugar, who should have no issue taming the camel, or possibly even throwing it to the finish line or something, making it much easier for them to get second. Team Chris, on the other hand, doesn't really have a good replacement for Sierra, though, as now they wouldn't build the boat nearly as quickly, and their team would probably be so dysfunctional that I think they would lose the goat. I can definitely see someone like Joe or Sugar sabotaging them while they're distracted and getting the goat to run away from the finish line. But yeah, anyway, I think Team Amazon gets first since Sugar can yeet the camel across, and Team Victory comfortably gets second, going at the most consistent pace since they only have to carry a stick, leaving Team Chris in last where, because the goat ran off, they are sent to elimination. Now, this vote is interesting, because obviously Lindsay and Caleb are voting together, but Alejandro and Fiore aren't, because of their beef from last season. And I think Bowie might pull Harold aside for an alliance just because, well, what other choice does he have? 
And Harold is a pretty nice and sensible guy. I mean, he was willing to work with Heather several times in the original, so someone like Bowie, who's not exactly trustworthy, but certainly less malicious and less likely to stab him in the back, should be easy enough for him to work with. So the two of them also vote together. With the two-year gap between Action and World Tour, it's now common knowledge that Fiore also cheated in addition to Alejandro last season, and Lindsay is way more assertive and dominant now with all her development over the previous seasons. So all that, plus all of them fighting, being a big reason why the team lost, makes all three of them targets. But I think Bowie and Harold, thinking about it strategically, vote for Lindsay because they know Al and Fiore aren't a duo, whereas Lindsay and Caleb are, and this way they can control the most votes with her gone against three teammates who likely aren't going to work together. Now for Caleb and Lindsay, they're obviously either targeting Fiore or Alejandro, and since they both cheated, that would kind of cancel out insofar as reasons to vote for one over the other. Meaning that, again, I think they'd look at it purely from a strategic point of view, and decide to both vote Fiore since she's probably going to be less useful in challenges. And Alejandro has also shown hints of insecurity here and there, which could be exploited later on. Whereas Fiore seems to just be a bottomless pit of mean, so yeah. And Alejandro and Fiore are both voting each other. I think this is pretty easy to call since, again, Alejandro is still extremely bitter about how their alliance fell apart with him getting screwed in Season 2 and Fiore would just want him to shut up and get off her back about the whole thing, so she'd vote him. This means that Alejandro, Lindsay, and Caleb vote for Fiore, Oe and Harold vote for Lindsay, and Fiore votes for Alejandro. So Fiore gets three votes, Lindsay gets two, and Alejandro gets one. This means that Fiore is voted out. However, I think Chris would actually make this a double elimination, and there's a couple of reasons why I think this would happen. A, there's precedent for this in action, since the first elimination was also a double elimination. B, since Duncan's not here to quit and no one else took his place in that regard, there'd now be one extra person than in the original, and the production team would need to balance that out and want to do it sooner rather than later. C, Chris would find all the bickering on the team really annoying, and he did a double elimination in this very season in the original for basically the same reason. And D, Chris would think it'd be a funny slash good twist to start the season on for ratings or a surprise factor. This means that both Fiore and Lindsay are eliminated. Team Amazon would be enjoying first class when Sugar accidentally falls on Mike, triggering Chester to come out and start complaining, which Sugar would find hilarious. Joe would roll her eyes at both of them, and have a confessional saying their last win better not be a fluke, and she's going to make sure her team is an unstoppable force. Julia would have a confessional saying she feels pretty good about things so far, and that she intends to keep a low profile for the time being. Team Chris would be much quieter now with only the four guys remaining, and Bowie would note how enjoyable and peaceful the quiet is. On Team Victory, Trent would awkwardly try to talk to Tess, and eventually breaks the awkwardness and apologizes for being on the same team, and hopes she doesn't feel he's invading her space, to which she responds by saying, smiling and saying he's not. Ellie rolls her eyes at him and in confessional calls him a sleazy cliche and that Tess can do better. The challenge in Japan then starts. The first part of the challenge is to choose one person from your team to roll in the giant pachinko machine with the panda inside the human-sized ball and win by scoring the most points. I think Bowie would reluctantly offer to go since no one else would want to and said the peace and quiet was nice while it lasted. Joe is obviously going for Team Amazon as self-appointed leader and I don't think anyone else would really have an issue with that. Even though they'd find her personality a bit irritating, no one would really care enough to challenge her at this point. And on Team Victory, I think Trent would offer offer to go in fleeting hopes of impressing Tess. So between Trent, Joe, and Bowie, this could really go a number of ways, but I decided that Bowie and Joe would revamp their old rivalry upon seeing each other, while Trent slowly moseys about, but as the other two keep bashing into each other, they both accidentally hit Trent, which sends both Bowie and Joe flying out of the machine, and giving Trent so much momentum that he racks up a bunch of points and wins the first part of the challenge by sheer coincidence. And the reward for doing that is first pick for the props for the commercial shoot. Tess would tell Trent good job, and Trent casually thanks her, and they then hold hands as they walk to the next part of the challenge. Now for this part, Harold is still here to shoot his samurai commercial, which means he still probably comes up with this really shitty idea, but now that there's stability on his team, since no one really has any beef, I think the other three can help make it salvageable. Team Victory could have Bridget come up with a surfing theme, while Tess and Trent pretend to ride waves and eat the product, while Ripper screams the theme song into the camera while farting, ruining the whole thing, after saying in confessional he feels he needs to quote-unquote, step up his game for his team, going completely off the rails without asking any of them first. And Sugar would insist on running the whole commercial, which would normally be a disaster, but it was shown in the original that Chef actually liked Cody and Sierra's high-energy nonsense commercial, which isn't too far off from what Sugar would do, so I think they actually would win once again. 
Joe in confessional would take all the credit for leading the team to victory, while Sugar cries tears of joy for being crowned pageant queen. Julia also has a confessional, saying the game seems almost too easy. As for who gets last, between Team Chris and Team Victory, I think Team Victory loses because, like I said, Harold's Samurai commercial is improved with the other three guys on his team, and Ripper would have just ruined his team's commercial, sending Team Victory to elimination. Guess who's getting kicked off? The only way Ripper doesn't lose 5-1 to one is if Ellie acts on her animosity towards Tess and Trent's bond and tries to convince others to vote Trent, but even then, I don't think she really hates him enough to do that, and she would still view Trent as less of a liability than Ripper after today, and even then, Ripper would probably still get the majority of the votes anyway. So in either a 4-2 to two or most likely 5-1 to one vote, Ripper is eliminated. Team Amazon would enjoy being in first class yet again, and Mike would mention how he feels really good about the team's win streak. Joe and Sugar would both intervene and say, yeah, no thanks to you, which makes him feel bad. Julia notices this and takes it as an opportunity to make nice with Mike. Mike would have a confessional nervously talking about how much he appreciated what Julia did, and Julia would have a confessional saying that Mike's a total dork, but with all the alpha women on her team, it would be nice to have someone closer to her that's easier to control. And she then takes a selfie with Mike. In the loser's quarters, nothing much really happens, with Team Chris and Cody would be seen relaxing. Bridget asks Cody how he can be so comfortable in a crappy place like that. Cody tells her it's nice to finally be away from Sierra and have some alone time, and Bridget and Ellie interject saying if he truly feels that way, maybe he and Sierra shouldn't be together in the first place, which Cody doesn't have a counter-argument to, so it just kind of gives him pause. Ellie says, trust me, some people just shouldn't be together, alluding to Tess and Trent catching up on the other side of the plane. Trent would be playing a sweet song for Tess until a part of the plane breaks his guitar, and Alejandro says it's a shame because he was enjoying the music, trying to make nice with them. But the two of them just give him the side eye for cheating and Alejandro growls under his breath. So the challenge this episode is one continuous race to hop the glaciers, basically that one minigame in Mario Party 9, leading into the second half where the team has to sled to the finish line. And I think Team Victory gets left in the dirt here. Almost everyone on Team Chris are some of the most athletic people in the show, and I think Julia would now start to get comfortable trying harder in challenges and playing more aggressively, even though she would still portray herself as a nice person. So her team is set because she and Joe would get through it pretty quick, and even though Sugar might hold them back by fumbling and maybe even breaking through the glaciers by accident, this would be balanced out by Svetlana being activated once they start lagging behind, catapulting them into first place by a mile. So Team Amazon and Team Chris would both get to the sled part and be fairly close to each other, while Team Victory lags behind. Cody would start asking Bridget to elaborate further on what she thinks about Sierra, but she really wouldn't want to since that makes her pretty uncomfortable. Joe, Emma, and Julia would all be impressed with Svetlana, but Sugar would be jealous of her because she'd view her as pageant competition. So she would throw Svetlana off balance and make Mike return as the sled crashes when they get set back. When Sugar tries to antagonize him, Julia defends him saying he did nothing wrong, and Joe backs them up since Sugar was the one that cost them their lead as Team Chris passes them and Team Victory catches up. But Julia in confessional would insist her current team setup for, for her is too good to risk losing, so she says if you can't win, you gotta make others lose and she just needs to find an angle to weaken one of the other teams. So having watched the previous seasons, Julia would overhear Cody trying to pry at Bridget and the rest of her team about Sierra, with all of them starting to grow hostile. And so Julia pulls Cody aside and tells him she thinks his relationship with Sierra is beautiful, and that Bridget is secretly just jealous, which Cody easily buys since Julia is very convincing and has no reputation at this point. And Julia gets Trent and Tess to buy into this lie as well, using the reasoning that first Bridget tells him to break up with Sierra and now is acting hostile, it just seems really shady, and this gets the three of them to believe this narrative about Bridget. Julia in confessional says, easy peasy, and even without Svetlana, Team Amazon can now comfortably get second, as Cody and Bridget's argument would cause the ice slash snow to fall on them, leaving them behind. And Team Amazon can just finish after Team Chris. When Alejandro tries to humble brag about winning over the girls, Mike now feeling pumped up after getting a morale boost from his team, claps back at him saying he just got lucky and would say, with Julia, I mean the Amazons, anything is possible, accidentally slipping up. Mike catches himself accidentally basically revealing he has a crush on Julia, which Alejandro picks up on and responds by saying, interesting, while walking away grinning. Mike would say whoops in confessional, followed by Julia in confessional trying to figure out who Svetlana and Chester are, and seeing if she can use any of these quote-unquote acts to her advantage. Now onto the vote with Team Victory, and since Cody, Trent, and Tess are all voting Bridget as a unit, she's getting voted out 3-1-1, to one to one, as I do think Ellie votes Trent and Bridget votes Cody, but she still gets the most votes and is sent out of the plane. Trent and Tess would apologize for Bridget to Cody, 
and Cody would say it's cool as long as he gets to stay in the game and continue his journey of independence. Ellie would say in confessional she thinks what happened last episode was bull, and that something is fishy, but chooses not to investigate because she doesn't want to risk getting screwed out of the game a third time. Joe would be super salty that her team lost, and she and Sugar would be fighting over that. While Mike tries to intervene, he gets told to shut up, and Julia tries to cheer him up again. Mike, in confessional, says Julia has had a really calming effect on him, and that he's considering maybe getting to know her well enough to reveal his MVD to her. But then Julia asks about his quote-unquote odd characters in a kinda intrusive way, since she wants to know more about them for strategy, not out of empathy. And even with her facade, I think Mike would get self-conscious about that, so in confessional he would say, then again, maybe not, about revealing his MPD. The first part of this challenge is to climb the Statue of Liberty with ropes. Now in this season, none of the contestants know when it's going to be an elimination or not, so Alejandro wouldn't use the same strategy as last season, where he held his cards during certain episodes, since now he has to assume he's at risk pretty much every episode. So he would try to get more out of Mike by taunting him, asking if he has any more characters, to which Mike angrily responds no. But because this would distract Mike, Joe would yell at him and by extension her whole team for not going fast enough, making Sugar snap and hop off the rope to tackle Joe. But Joe swiftly dodges and Sugar instead body slams Mike into the ground, accidentally tearing his shirt in the process which of course activates Vito. Now, originally Vito had a thing for Anne Maria, which I assume is because she was the most quote-unquote conventionally attractive female contestant in that season, at least in the shallow popular cartoon girl sense. And so I think now that would naturally transition to Julia, since she does have some similarities to Anne Maria, I know this is kind of a stretch, but I think it makes enough sense for it to happen. This would just really confuse Julia, since even though she wanted to know more about Mike's personas, having a shirtless Jersey guy blatantly flirt with her would be off-putting, to say the least. Julia would start taking notes about all of Mike's personas and what it could mean, and eventually he just turns back into Mike. When Julia asks who Vito is, Mike would dodge the question, which would tell Julia that Mike is clearly hiding something, and Alejandro would also catch on to this because he'd be confident enough in his team to lag behind just enough to eavesdrop without losing his team's lead. Cody would try to take charge of his team, since they've yet to win a single challenge, he'd feel a bit more confident now. So Team Victory would be able to get a slight lead on Team Chris since Alejandro was distracted earlier once they both take their boats through the sewers and arrive at the dock, while Team Amazon lags behind. The next part of the challenge is to drag the Big Apple across the pond and one team member in the stroller, and the person in the stroller was seemingly the lightest person on each team in the original. So with that in mind, Ellie, Julia, and Harold are in the strollers. As for who's going in the water to grab the Big Apple, I guess it would be Alejandro... Cody, and Sugar, because Joe would make her go for the apple. Sugar would probably just eat the apple, and I think Alejandro would normally beat Cody, but Alejandro would get too cocky, and Team Victory already being in the lead would let Cody's determination pull through as they narrowly win. Losing to Cody would frustrate Alejandro, but because he still got second and gained new info on Mike, he'd still keep a cool head. Then, of course, it's revealed to have just been a reward challenge, but the winners of the challenge get a couple prizes, one of which is a meat grinder meant to help them with the next challenge. Now, originally, Heather throws out the meat grinder out of frustration and spite, but I don't think anyone on Team Victory would do that now, since everyone besides Ellie would be generally optimistic, and she wouldn't do something like that as to not jeopardize herself more than she probably already is at this point. There would actually be quite a few changes to this aftermath. Duncan didn't quit, Ezekiel doesn't exist, Bridget never cheated on Jeff with Alejandro so they would never fight, Jeff and Blanley would still be hosting, and I think most of the focus would probably be on Mike, since he'd be the audience favorite with all his intriguing personas, obviously his MPD wouldn't be public knowledge yet. And there'd also be some sprinkles of Cody's newfound confidence with Sierra worried, Joe and Sugar fighting, Alejandro still being slimy, etc. I don't really know what the song would be, but I'm not really going to worry about those. In fact, I'm not really going to delve into any of the songs throughout the season, since they don't really need to be changed in any meaningful way in this rewrite. They're used to drive the episode plots forward, but not really the overarching story, which is what I'm focusing on. So, yeah. I think Tess and Trent would still just be in the getting along stage since they're now more focused on winning than romance. Ellie would still be cool with Tess and for now put her bias against Trent aside to blend in with the team. Everyone still falls out of the plane in Germany and Sugar would cause the ice avalanche instead of Tyler. And then they get to the grind the hot dog meat into a sled challenge, which Team Victory is obviously winning since they have the meat grinder. And I think Bowie and Harold would motivate Caleb to get them in second by pumping the meat fast. I didn't mention this before, but Caleb wouldn't really be working at full capacity since he'd miss Lindsay, and I think now the other members of his team would be motivating him a bit more, since now that they lost the last challenge, they'd notice something is up with him. 
As for the Slap Slap tournament, the first place team has three people and helmets, the second place team has two people and wool hats, and last place also has three people for some weird reason, but no armor and one of them has to wear the pants hosen. On Team Victory, I think Tess sits out since Ellie would want to play for her, in order to reassure her because she's worried her loyalty to Trent might screw her over. Team Chris only gets two people, so I think they just go with Bowie and Caleb. And Team Amazon has Julia wear the pants hosen, since Chris chooses the person who doesn't want it the most, and obviously this would mess with Julia's social media image. So she would go, and I think Mike would also want to go, but Joe wouldn't like dancing, and Sugar would probably want to go. We have these eight competing tournament style, and I used a random number generator to determine the matchups. And this is the list of what I got. So for Trent versus Mike, Mike could probably get Svetlana to win, and also Trent would probably be thinking about Tess too much to focus on the challenge. Julia versus Bowie, Bowie wins easily since Julia is stuck with the pants hosen. This, e this event drags Julia out of her facade a bit, being a bit more cutthroat now in general, but still being nice to Mike specifically since he's her greatest ally right now. For Caleb versus Cody, I mean, this one's obvious, doesn't matter how good Cody does here, Caleb is five times his size. For Ellie versus Sugar, again, not a fair matchup, Sugar dominates. So with that, the next rounds are Mike versus Bowie. I think Bowie wins since Svetlana has a time limit and Bowie is really athletic. For Caleb versus Sugar, this one is close, but I think Sugar wins just because the dancing factor is more suited to her. And Caleb might still be a little out of it without Lindsay there. And finally, there's Bowie versus Sugar. And Bowie has the moonwalk, so I give the slight edge to him. Since Team Amazon and Team Chris were both in the finals, this means that Team Victory loses. And before the vote, I think this is where Ellie makes a move. See, Ellie got booted last season for simply not being on the ends with her team, and with the other three people on her team getting along pretty well, she'd be worried this would happen to her again. So feeling like she has no other choice, she goes to the most cutthroat contestant in the game that she knows of, that being Alejandro, and begs him to throw Trent under the bus. Alejandro agrees to do this so long as she must pay back the favor by unofficially getting her team to work with his to effectively double-team the Amazons, so they'd kinda have a secret alliance. Even though Ellie doesn't like him, she sees this as a good strategic move, so Alejandro convinces Cody to vote Trent by saying, oh, you know, you should be the alpha man on your team, and normally Cody wouldn't care about that, but just to show how he wants to be independent, he'd be convinced into thinking this is a good gameplay move. So this way, Ellie and Cody both vote for Trent, and Ellie could easily convince Tess to vote Cody, since obviously she likes both her and Trent more, and Trent probably votes Ellie by default, meaning the vote is 2-1-1 to to one to one with Trent losing. Tess and Trent would be shocked and ask why Ellie did that, and her excuse would be there was just no one else to vote off, and that there's no hard feelings, which I think they'd think is fair enough, even though Ellie doesn't actually like Trent at all and really wanted them gone. Trent just wishes the rest of them good luck, and Ellie says in confessional she feels much more confident about getting closer to Tess. Alejandro and Ellie's pact would now go into motion, and so Ellie would simply suggest to Tess that they make a temporary alliance with Team Chris to take out Team Amazon, without telling her the full truth. Even though Tess would argue they can't be trusted, especially since Al cheated, Ellie would point out that Team Amazon has been way too strong this season, and that he's a necessary evil to work with, which I think is a succinct enough argument for Tess to agree. Now, Cody would be a much tougher sell, since, you know, he's trying to be the big man on his team. This challenge is the race across the Amazon forest. Since Team Amazon got kidnapped in the original, I think that would still happen, especially since the reason they did that was because of overconfidence, which pretty much everyone on this team probably has at this point. Julia replaces Heather as the fake tribal god, and even after it's revealed she was a fake, Mike boldly tells her she's still a real god to her. Julia in confessional says he's definitely crushing on him, she'd figure it out by now, which he does as when Julia asks about his characters, Mike finally breaks the truth to her about his MPD, as well as all the personalities, including Manitoba, who hasn't been introduced yet, and all of their triggers. This makes Julia ecstatic, as she now knows pretty much everything about Mike, and coupled with her team's overall strength, she's in a really good position. They would still lose the challenge today, though, and I think Team Chris wins, since Ellie would kind of have to let Alejandro win in order to honor their argument, which makes the rest of her team kind of suspicious, and she ultimately spills the beans about the deal she made with Alejandro, which has mixed reception, as you would imagine. So with Team Amazon being sent to elimination, the vote would be all over the place, but I think Joe gets the most votes for just being too annoying. Not that it matters, because it's a non-elimination round, and this of course makes Joe really angry at her team. Alright, so this is the one where they go to the Louvre, and each team has to find their designated statue somewhere in there, and dodge a bunch of shit Chris put there for the funny like the lasers and the Yeti. 
Because Tess and Ellie would still be cool up to this point, and they'd be in Paris, which is very romantic, I think they would kiss at the end of this episode and start dating, kind of taking the place of the icy London kiss, except Tess wouldn't be cheating, it'd just kind of be out of left field since, you know, she and Trent seemed like they would rekindle, but they ultimately didn't. Now, the reason I think this would happen is because, remember, Ellie and Tess know each other before this season even started. They've been going to art school together for two years, and they have a pre-established connection that I think could very easily be romantic in this timeline. Although I don't expect that to be the case in the actual season of Disventure Camp we got coming up. I know Ellie is canonically gay and Tess is bi, and I think since she's in a polycube with a guy and a girl, I think this couple makes sense, since I do think personality-wise they would mesh pretty well, and neither of them are dating anyone else. Again, Trent is single. So yeah, I think they would now become a thing. And no one would see this kiss this time since it wouldn't be in the bathroom plane, but a secluded corner in the Louvre. I know it's weird for me to bring this up out of order, but the reason I did is because this also means Ellie and Tess wouldn't really be competing in this challenge, just kind of meandering about enjoying each other's company. But I still think Team Victory wins, because their statues seem to be by far the easiest to find, considering Lindsay almost had the entire thing done before any other team by herself in the original. So it shouldn't be too difficult for Team Victory to beat the other two teams, even if it's just Cody doing the legwork. And because of Ellie and Alejandro's pact, even though Cody wouldn't like it, Tess would help Team Chris build their statue faster, while Ellie can mess with Team Amazons and make it look like an accident even though pretty much the whole team would be able to tell she's doing it on purpose, putting a target on her back as a result. Even still, Team Amazon now loses yet again. Now, at the elimination, Joe and Sugar are obviously voting for each other, since they've had beef for a while now, and Mike will vote for whoever Julia wants, which means whoever they pick between Sugar and Joe is guaranteed to have at least three votes, which is the majority. So it all comes down to who Julia wants to keep around. And honestly, I think she gets rid of Joe. A, because Julia would now want to be a more openly aggressive player and want to take full control of her team, and since Joe is, you know, team leader, she would be in the way of that. And B, Sugar is surprisingly useful in a fair number of challenges and provides an easier meat shield for future eliminations. Finally, for the first time, we get a filler episode I can't do much with. Julia now becomes team leader and basically friend zones Mike without actually doing it, purposefully being vague in order to keep his loyalty. Other than that, Team Amazon probably wins this challenge, and that's about it. Now, originally in this episode, Izzy jumps off the plane and drags Owen with him, causing her to get injured and automatically removed from the game. But now that neither Izzy nor Owen are here, that wouldn't happen. But the cast is still stranded in Jamaica because the plane runs out of fuel. So the first part of the challenge is to dive into eel-infested water and give Chris sunken gold. I guess Cody would jump, but I don't see him winning. All the guys on Team Chris would also go, but I think Sugar would actually create a giant explosion in the water and could just find gold by plopping down in there. But Alejandro would do a flip over her and yoink the gold from her, giving it to Chris and winning helmets during the second part of the challenge, which is the dangerous sledding course thing. Alejandro also wins this challenge originally with Tyler by getting the best time and punching a hole in the course, making it more difficult for other teams to play. And I see no reason why he still wouldn't do that here, so Team Chris wins yet again. With this victory, I think Alejandro can now comfortably cement himself as team leader, since even though his teammates don't trust him, they'd have to admit he's proven himself very useful and hasn't screwed any of them over. So now I think Al has a lot more goodwill, which will be important. And since Julia and Mike are just a stronger duo than anyone on Team Victory, they would get the better time, meaning that Team Victory is sent to elimination. And it's pretty obviously Cody, since Ellie and Tess are dating, but Cody would be happy to have gotten this far on his own. This aftermath would actually be largely the same, since the cast is still stranded in Jamaica, and they need to turn the episode into a telethon in order to raise a million dollars for the show to continue. Which they, of course, still managed to do, and that's about it, really. The only other thing worth mentioning is I think Cody and Sierra would still be together, since Cody now was able to play the game by himself and also conveniently left right before the cast got stranded in Jamaica, so that's a plus. And realizing the competitive nature of the game just isn't really for him, and he and Sierra could play a major role in helping out with the telethon, effectively ending their arc. This episode, on the other hand, has a ton of changes, since for starters, there's still three teams in this timeline. Also, Ezekiel doesn't exist, meaning he never goes feral and can therefore never be Jack the Ripper, so instead I'll just say Chef does it. Alejandro still gets taken first for trying to snoop around. Ellie and Tess obviously stick together. Team Amazon splits up between Julia and Mike versus Emma and Sugar. And the other three guys on Team Chris probably all go together too. People tend to only really get taken when alone in this episode, so I'll say that still holds true. And because of that, I think Team Victory is going to end up winning. 
since they'd stick by each other the whole time the closest, and they're also less likely to make themselves targets compared to people like Harold, Sugar, Julia, etc. So they win immunity. Now, originally, there's the bullshit rule that because Team Amazon found Duncan, they get handed the win, even though the other team actually beat the challenge. But because they wouldn't be actively hunting a contestant because they quit, that objective would never replace the original goal of subduing Jack the Ripper. So in this timeline, Team Victory wins fair and square. However, someone still needs to return here, and because Chris's intentions were very clearly to stir up drama, he'd pick Trent, who would willingly return, now out of pure spite and greed, and he'd be Team Victory's quote-unquote prize for winning. Some other things that happen this episode is Emma and Sugar make an alliance since they both know Julia and Mike are already a pair. And Julia would be using Mike's various personalities to get further in challenges, but even then, Chef still stops both him and Julia eventually. It would be very clear to the audience that Julia's just using Mike, but Mike still has rose-tinted glasses and is pretty much enamored by Julia, since like I said much earlier in this video, he's a very dorky and socially awkward guy, and seeing this seemingly nice and loyal girl get this close to him would convince him she's the one for him. While Julia in confessional would outright say there's no way I'm dating that dork, he's gonna ride me to the million and then I'm ditching him. Between teams Chris and Amazon, I think team Chris is the losing team here, since they'd most likely be caught by Chef the soonest on average. Again, Alejandro was caught first, and I could easily see Caleb or Harold getting segregated from the group enough to get caught. Oh, if this were a few episodes ago, Alejandro would easily get the boot, but because he now has a lot more control over his team, I think he pretty easily convinces the Bowie and Harold alliance to get rid of Caleb, since he'd be kind of out of it, and he's too ethical of a person to be around the nefarious schemes he wants to cook up. So, in a 3-1 to one vote, Caleb is eliminated. This next episode is the one where they go to Greece, and the love triangle in this timeline is a bit different from the canon one. Obviously, these three characters are new, but Trent would sort of take Courtney's position as the bitter one, though less sporadic and insane since he's been seen to be affected by jealousy before. Tess would feel a bit bad for feeling like she led Trent on, but Ellie would tell her not to worry about it, and would obviously completely be on the fuck Trent train, since in this timeline, even with the moral ambiguity, it's very clear that Tess didn't cheat, since they broke up years ago and never actually got together, despite certain signs alluding to otherwise. So yeah, that's kind of what the love triangle looks like here. And Ellie and Trent would both be very vocal about their beef, which draws in attention from both Alejandro and Julia, both wanting to manipulate this messy situation to their advantage. So anyway, the first part of this challenge is the team's sparring, and now that there's still three teams in this timeline, it'd literally just be the last person standing wins. Team Victory is immediately out because A, they'd all be at each other's throats, and B, because they're just weaker than the other teams anyway. Between Team Chris and Team Amazon, I think it'd be pretty close, and I do think someone would have to sit out on Team Amazon to make it a fair 3v3. But even so, I don't see a way for the guys to beat someone like a Vito and Sugar double team, or a Julia and Vito double team, or even like a Julia and Emmo double team would be a problem, so yeah, I think they win. Second part of the challenge is a single person hurdle race. Again, doesn't matter who goes for team victory, they're getting left in the dust. I think Alejandro would still go against Julia, and Alejandro would still lose by trying to show off and stumbling out of sheer cockiness, even without Heather to taunt. So Julia wins another point for her team, and because they already have two points, they automatically win immunity. So the tiebreaker is now exclusively a race to not get last between Team Victory and Team Chris. And once again, Team Victory loses, it doesn't really matter what the matchup is, they literally lose every single combination. So Team Amazon wins first class, with Alejandro giving a wink to Julia's prowess. And Julia would now seize the moment to weaken Team Victory, because she would pick up on some hints that Ellie is working with Alejandro against her team. Now, one might think that means Julia is gunning for an Ellie boot, but this just wouldn't be that practical, since getting Tess to vote for her literal girlfriend is gonna be tough. So instead, Julia talks to Tess as a fake shoulder to cry on, and when Tess explains her guilt getting caught up between her girlfriend and her ex-boyfriend, Julia suggests that she vote herself to make the rest of her team feel better. I just kind of alluding to it being the right thing to do. And I think with Trent's current state, Julia can easily manipulate him into voting for Tess instead of Ellie, since he's still mad at both of them anyway. And with Ellie voting for Trent, that means Trent has one vote and Tess has two. Shocking her teammates, but Tess being satisfied, hoping this will ease tensions. Now, the reason I think Julia would orchestrate this is because Tess is the one person kind of holding her team together, whereas Trent and Ellie completely hate each other way more than they actually care about winning challenges, making their team even more dysfunctional than before. Plus, now Julia also has Trent in her back pocket. 
Also, I know this is originally a non-elimination, but because Izzy didn't get flattened by the plane and removed from the game, there's one extra person, meaning there needs to be another elimination round, and this would be it. So, yeah. Alejandro would now notice how Ellie's deal to help him has now been rendered completely useless after everything that happened, and he'd now be trying to figure out who's behind its collapse. This challenge is the Area 52 one, where the first team to find an alien artifact and bring it back to Chris intact wins. Trent would actively be trying to lose, but Julia's logic would be that the merge is coming any minute now, and for now she'll just help Trent stay in the game and have Team Chris get last place until the merge, and then once they get there she'll get Ellie kicked off. Which just sounds enough logic for Trent to be on board with this plan. Trent is basically an honorary Team Amazon member. Julia would still hold Mike tight as her number one ally though, and this is also the first time Manitoba Smith comes out since they find a hat in Area 52, making it extremely easy for them to find an artifact so they win pretty easily. Alejandro still gets face-hugged by the alien, and Harold and Bowie probably suffer a similar fate, since they'd all be close by to each other. Ellie would eventually find an artifact, and Trent wouldn't help her at all, but he wouldn't get in the way either, per Julia's plan. So Team Chris ends up getting last place here, and it's pretty tough to say who'd go, since Bowie and Harold are still technically in an alliance, but I think Alejandro would be able to convince Bowie to turn on Harold by telling him that if they get rid of him now, they're in big trouble as a team if the merge doesn't hit soon, since he's essentially keeping them afloat, and Bowie would ultimately have to agree. So Harold votes Alejandro out of loyalty, but the other two vote out Harold for being the weak link, so he's out. Also, by the end of the episode, Alejandro finds out Julia is controlling Team Victory, so he plans a counter strat for the next episode. This is the episode where they have to ride the emus to the cliff, and then the first team to shear a sheep with their team's logo on it wins. During the emu ride, Alejandro puts his counter strat into motion, and talks to Ellie since Trent is already in Julia's back pocket. Alejandro puts on a gentleman's act saying how he sympathizes with Ellie about how rude Trent has been and that she deserves true love and happiness. Ellie tells him to drop the act and tells him that their deal already expired, but Alejandro insists they continue targeting Team Amazon because Trent is in Julia's pocket anyway, so it's in her best interest to side with him on this. And with Bowie getting in on this too now, Ellie would agree to help them win since she's going to have a really hard time doing it by herself. So now I think these three would all gang up on Trent, and Bowie lures Trent's emu away and Ellie gives him the finger as she leaves him behind. Trent in confessional says, oh, it's so on. So Trent calls for help, and Julia reluctantly agrees to help him, which makes Mike a little jealous. And this is something Sugar takes note of once Team Amazon all get to the sheep shearing part. So Sugar would try to manipulate Mike into turning on Julia by insinuating that Julia is into Trent instead of him, and bring up how she's essentially been using him the entire time, which is actually kind of true in this case. And kind of similar to Dave in Pocketoo Island, she gets Mike to act more desperate around Julia with clear disdain for Trent, and Julia would see Sugar smile not too far away. This infuriates Julia, and in confessional she says, there's only room for one manipulator around here, so now she actively sabotages her own team by first helping Trent win, and then convinces Emma Sugar is into Chase by creating a fake Instagram profile of her interacting with Chase's, since she's a social media influencer, she'd know how to do something like that, breaking up the other alliance on her team and just simply letting Team Chris wool their sheep before her team does, so that when Team Amazon loses, Sugar easily gets voted out 3-1 to one now, with Mike and Emma voting alongside her. Sugar angrily exits as she tells the rest of her team to watch out for the grease pig known as Chulia, kind of like what Noah said about eels, but now it'd be the country girl version. And just to ensure Mike's loyalty, Julia kisses him at the end of this episode to get rid of any doubts he had that she's into him, even though she's faking it. This episode remains a non-elimination challenge, but sadly, they no longer build Gwen's face since Cody isn't competing and Gwen hasn't been introduced yet. What a tragedy. Anyway, Team Victory still basically just doesn't exist anymore, with Trent working for Julia and Ellie working for Alejandro. Julia would now have complete control over her team, and they both build regular boats, but I think Team Chris and Ellie actually win this one, because Julia would try using Svetlana, but at this point Alejandro would know enough to think of the idea to tell Mike Julia is in danger, reverting him back to his OG persona, and distracting his team long enough to destroy the other team's ship. Alejandro would now be on Julia's tail, and their rivalry would now be amped up even further. This aftermath stays basically the same. Jeff and Blainley are still here. Blainley ships Bridget overseas. Jeff seeks revenge by tricking Blainley into accidentally winning the aftermath trivia game, forcing her to compete in World Tour. So it doesn't actually matter who else plays, yada yada yada, you get it. And now, finally, we are at the merge. Blainley joins the game with her awful rap songs, and with four grooms and four brides for the wedding game, I just hand-selected the pairs since even though they're technically random, they clearly all align with pairs that made the most sense plot-wise, 
So I did Alejandro and Julia, Trent and Ellie, Emma and Bowie, and then Mike and Blainley. The first part of the challenge is the blindfolded cake maze, which they all clear as Trent is now hellbent on getting rid of Ellie and vice versa. So he makes her fall into all the cakes, but Alejandro tells Ellie how to get to the finish and scolds Trent for being ungentlemanlike. And Mike is too distracted by Julia being paired with someone else to direct Blainley efficiently. But regardless, they all eventually get there. Alejandro and Julia would win the first part, so they'd get a head start. And on the tightrope, this is where both of them finally directly confront each other as the two kingpins of the season. And both agree to a temporary truce just to get rid of the weaker players first. And Alejandro also throws intentionally to keep a target off his back, like in the original. Bowie would get Emma across, but would struggle at the trivia. Mike would try becoming Svetlana, but would realize he can't access his, his personalities for some reason, so he would just fall off the tightrope. Ellie would tell Trent that they have to work together to win this challenge as much as they hate each other, since they're a pair, and Trent begrudgingly agrees, and I think both of them would be good enough at the trivia to win immunity, but still fight the entire time. Much like how Duncan and Courtney did originally. So with Ellie and Trent immune, they need to find someone else to vote out. Alejandro and Julia would still be allies with each of them respectively, so they would want to pull both of them into a vote. And if there's one thing they can all agree on, it's that Blainley is super annoying and deserves to get kicked off. And Julia can easily get Mike as a fifth vote against her, guaranteeing Blainley goes home no matter what. During the first part of the challenge, everyone still crosses the finish line in the race, so everyone competes in the gross food eating challenge. Also, Sierra isn't here to give Cody the love potion this time around. At this point, Mike would tell Julia that he can't seem to access his personalities, and there would even be a cutscene inside his head showing something weird is happening with a mysterious shadow figure in the background. Julia would say in confessional that without his other personalities, Mike is essentially just a useless dork, and that perhaps he's outlived his usefulness, but still wants to keep his vote for the time being. Since Julia won the gross eating challenge in the reboot, I see no reason why she wouldn't win this one too. Alejandro is notoriously bad with challenges like this. Emma and Bowie, she both beat in canon, and like these three I just don't think would be as good at eating gross stuff as Julia. And Blainley isn't here to cheat, meaning there's no food swap or any other complications, so she still gets immunity. Trent and Ellie have confessionals saying now they can finally boot the other off the show, and the respective alliances back each of their votes up, since why wouldn't they? Easy to keep targets off their backs. So we've got Ellie, Alejandro, and Bowie voting against Trent, and then we've got Trent, Julia, and Mike voting against Ellie. And that leaves the only other vote in the middle being Emma's, who probably just votes for Bowie or something for being a big threat. I don't know. Doesn't matter since Trent and Ellie are tied 3-3 to this episode, and it is a double elimination. And Chris could still say these two's rivalry has worn out its welcome and kick both of them out without a tiebreaker for both of them yapping too much. So this would now be the final five. And the main differences here are no feral Ezekiel to hunt down and also no Sierra rescue mission for Cody either. So instead, everyone just has to tranquilize each other with the last person standing winning. At first, there'd be a bunch of shooting from everyone, but Alejandro and Julia would be at a western standstill and not wanting to risk getting taken out by the other. They both agree to take out everyone else instead. And once they do so, that just leaves the two of them, and Julia ultimately wins by stealing the rest of the darts from Alejandro while he wasn't looking. Alejandro is frustrated yet impressed by the maneuver in, in confessional, and for the voting, I think the two alliances between Alejandro and Bowie and Julia and Mike would just come together and get Emma out simply because it's the easiest and least complicated option. Plus, Alejandro and Julia would kind of want to keep each other around just so that they can face each other in the finale. So this is essentially just a 2v2 at this point. Alejandro would figure the best thing to do is try and turn Mike against Julia, but he doesn't get anywhere in trying to do so since Mike is too loyal and too preoccupied with his own problems. The first part of the challenge doesn't matter since the winner gets a helmet when confronting the Condor, which does basically nothing. Now the big thing about this episode is that it's a non-elimination round, and Alejandro actually picks Julia to go to first class with him, shocking everyone, specifically in the hopes of making Mike jealous enough to force Julia to get rid of him, making her an easier target going forward. Bowie would be upset about this, since he and Alejandro had a pact and he'd view this as a betrayal. The episode begins in first class with Alejandro convincing Julia to get rid of Mike, and she asks him how she know he'll get rid of Bowie before her in the finale, and Alejandro insists that she just trust him. Julia in confessional says there ain't no way she's doing that, 
and that she knows he's up to something. Mike would be talking to Bowie in lure class, asking what to do about Julia, and Bowie would just find the whole thing kinda sad since he knows she's using him, and tells Mike to move on to someone else. The first part of the challenge is to build a dinosaur and then put the other players in a lie detector test to vote for who their favorite dinosaur is. Alejandro would still make the realistic looking one, while Bowie and Julia both make stylized ones, and Mike makes one similar to Sierra's based on a broken heart. I think Mike votes for Alejandro since in his current state he wouldn't want anything bright and colorful, and Alejandro's would be the driest by default. Alejandro would vote for Mike's dinosaur since he'd view it as the most avant-garde compared to the others. And Julia and Bowie's fashion senses are completely different from one another, so neither of them would vote for each other, and both probably both think Alejandro's is too bland and boring, so I'd imagine both of them vote Mike's by default. So this means that Mike gets three votes in favor of his dinosaur, Alejandro gets one, and Bowie and Julia both get zero. So Mike gets the drill in order to dig up oil and get himself immunity. Julia would try to salvage her fake relationship with Mike since she wants his help with the drill. Mike asks what she's been doing with Alejandro in first class, and on the tightrope and just in general notices how Julia seems to respect Alejandro more than him. Julia's excuse is that she's keeping her enemies close and she truly wants to go to the end with him. Mike would say he has to think about it before he trusts her enough to give her the drill. So fed up with all that, Julia pushes Mike over, causing Chester to come out temporarily. While Julia steals the barrel of oil from Mike after he dug it up, and she wins immunity after giving it to Chris. Since even though Mike can't directly access his other personalities, they still exist and can be triggered by certain things, and would also be trying to escape Mike's mind from you-know-who. After Chris announces Julia as the winner, Alejandro and Bowie both come back to witness Mike angrily confronting her, but when Mike tries to talk to her, Julia lashes out at him in front of everyone, telling him she would never go out with someone like him, and that he was only ever a tool to him, and that spending time with a dorky loser like him was never worth it. This completely breaks Mike as he just lies on the ground frozen in misery. Bowie and Alejandro are both shocked and confessional and say even they aren't that evil. And since nobody blows up the plane this time around, this vote is pretty straightforward. Mike and Julia are obviously voting for each other, and since Alejandro and Bowie are still in an alliance, and also see how easily Mike broke down because of Julia, they wouldn't want him in the game as a potential shield for Julia, so they both vote Mike, since obviously Julia has immunity, so they can't vote for her. And even though they pity Mike, it just makes the most sense to get rid of him here. To everyone's surprise, Mike barely reacts at all and just says it doesn't even matter anymore. Even though the plane isn't blown up, Mike still stays on it because Chris would intentionally plan on leaving the camper stranded and force them to make their own way to Hawaii. This aftermath is where each finalist has someone to represent them in a surfing challenge, where they have to get the flower necklace on their player's animal to get a prize that helps them in the finale. First place being a wheelbarrow, second being a stroller, and third gets nothing. I know they have to select the animals, but that's way too complicated, so I'm just going to copy the three that originally get picked and say Bowie's is a deer, Alejandro's is the dog, and Julia's is the jaguar. James obviously volunteers for Bowie, since they're dating, and even though Julia's true colors are now super apparent to everyone, I think Ripper would offer to volunteer for her, since he'd just find her attractive. And I don't think anyone would willingly go for Alejandro, so I'll just say Izzy does it, just for the thrill of it. Now you'd think that means it's an easy win for Izzy, but remember that she's doing this purely for the thrill, meaning she'd probably surf off course and be way off the mark, so she's getting last by just launching herself out of the competition entirely. And James is obviously the better surfer compared to Ripper, so unless some weird plot armor thing happens, Bowie is winning the wheelbarrow and Julia wins the stroller. Bowie and Alejandro both scold Julia for playing with Mike's emotions in such a cruel way, and she responds by calling them both hypocrites since neither of them are angels themselves, plus they all voted out Mike anyway. Bowie and Alejandro make it abundantly clear that they're gonna double team to take Julia out, and Julia responds by saying she saw this coming and will have no issue beating both of them. Meanwhile, Mike is sleeping on the plane, and we get a long cutscene of Mike finally confronting his worst nightmare, Mal. Mike would be in chains and Mal would be able to take full control of the body because of how much despair Mike was slash is in, with Mal telling Mike how pathetic he was as a host for the body, and now it's time for someone with a backbone to take charge. Even though Mike is out of the competition, Mal easily sneaks out of the plane just to torment the other competitors, putting on the Mike facade which nobody would have any reason to suspect is fake. I think everyone in the final three decide to get on the train, just at different points, and Julia would be slightly ahead and eventually notice that the other two are behind her. 
So she decides to cut the brakes off one of the train carts. Right after she does this, she laughs and says the million dollars is hers, while Mal's shadow briefly lurks behind her, right before disappearing. Bowie and Alejandro hop on the nearby horses to catch up to Julia, so they all get to the dock near the finish line at roughly the same time. Everyone else would be onlooking as the boat race to the finish is happening, with Alejandro and Julia sword fighting while Bowie steers the boat Alejandro is in. This eventually causes the two boats to collide, knocking Bowie and Alejandro's boat off course, while Julia grabs the wheel and heads straight for the finish line in hers, when suddenly, Mal attacks her from behind, pushing her to the back of the boat while punching the motor and immobilizing it in the process. Julia yells, I thought I got rid of you, and Mal responds, Oh, you did. I'm nothing like him. Julia starts tussling with Mal again, and Alejandro and Bowie are seen swimming right past them and getting on shore to the finish line. When it seems like Julia is finally getting the upper hand in her tussle against Mal, Mal rips off another piece of the boat and messes with its wires, causing it to explode right after jumping ship. And this launches Julia into the top of the finish line sign, where she crashes right into it and falls to the ground right next to the actual finish line. But, Bowie and Alejandro pass her seconds later, making the final two Bowie and Alejandro as Julia lets out a massive shriek upon her defeat. So in this timeline, we skip straight past the tiebreaker, and each finalist selects two people to help them make their pineapple sacrifice. I can see Alejandro getting Ellie and Tess to help, since they kinda had a decent-ish connection during the game, though he'd definitely need to give up some cash, and Bowie would obviously get James to help him, and I think he would also get Lindsay just out of spite against Alejandro. Bowie's team makes the sacrifice slightly faster and also has the wheelbarrow, which gives him a decent head start. The stroller is useless to Alejandro just like in the original, but he should be able to carry it fine enough, albeit slower than Bowie can wheel it, obviously. Once they get to the stepping stone spread across the lava, Bowie retains his lead until Lindsay accidentally cuts the cage trap on him, allowing Alejandro to get past him. Bowie is about to give up when Lindsay tells him that everyone is rooting for him down there, and he looks down and sees everyone cheering at the bottom of the volcano. When Bowie asks why he's getting so much support despite his villainous behavior in the past, Lindsay flippantly calls him the lesser of two evils in this case, which motivates Bowie enough to escape the cage. Alejandro is almost to the top of the volcano, so as Bowie catches up to him, James goes over to the wheelbarrow and brings it to Bowie to give him the chance to catch up. Bowie is shocked and flattered James would risk skipping across the lava for him, and James responds by giving him a kiss and says, you've earned this, now go win this thing. And since he's now able to wheel the sacrifice up the hill again, Bowie would be literally right behind Alejandro once they both get to the top of the mountain and he's about to throw it in. But right after Alejandro taunts a bit by saying nothing can stop me as he's about to throw the pineapple sacrifice, Mal comes out from the shadows and tackles him to the ground. Bowie, along with everyone else, is shocked at what they're witnessing when James snaps him out of it and tells him to throw his pineapple into the volcano. And so Bowie does just that, throwing his dummy into the volcano and winning Total Drama World Tour with a standing ovation. Mal attempts to steal the briefcase from Bowie after Chris gives it to him, but Alejandro manages to knock him out from behind with the other pineapple and says, done and done. Alejandro takes his loss surprisingly well since he doesn't have any serious beef with Bowie, and shakes his hand and congratulates him. And the volcano would still erupt, but now that Ezekiel isn't here to drop himself and the money in the briefcase into the lava, they would all make it out without any serious injuries, and Bowie keeps the money. Since Mal would be barely able to escape the lava in time after being knocked out, he would crawl his way off the volcano and need to be put in the same cast Blainley was originally after the damage from the fall which would be shown as Chris does the final outro for the season. And the alternate ending would just be the same line of events, only with Bowie accidentally throwing the wrong dummy in, and Chris would hold the briefcase while they all escape the mountain. In both endings, we get the same post credit scene with Chef waiting at the hospital for Mal to be checked out, and Mal would be seen sitting on a hospital bed in his cast, and I guess they could still do the Vader reference with like a tube in his mouth or something. And the scene cuts to black as Mal slightly opens one of his eyes, and his evil laugh fades the season out. So, that was World Tour. Yeah, I know, it was a lot, and pretty dark compared to the other rewrites I did, but hey, it is what it is. I'm really looking forward to doing Revenge of the Island next, because I'm really getting sick of this cast, and it's going to be much easier to do that one, because it's going to be a shorter season with a smaller cast. So yeah, expect the Season 4 rewrite to come out fairly soon, but uh, yeah, see you then.